Welcome back to another Modisoft back office video. My name is Jonathan, and today we're going to be going over on how you can manually enter your invoices in Modisoft. Anytime you have placed an order to your vendors and then you receive the orders at your location, they generally will give you a piece of paper that could be either manually written down or it could even have barcodes where you can scan the products into the system. Modisoft does accept both ways of entering these type of invoices into the system, and we're going to show you real quick on how you can do that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into the top left corner to the main menu, go into products, and here to purchases. So when this page opens up, it's going to show you all the purchases that you have done at your location. So if you want to create a specific purchase, whether you are paid cash to the vendor, if you paid by check, or even if it was a credit purchase, you have the ability to do so above here. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and just say that we paid this vendor with cash. So we'll go to cash. And then we can go here to the right side where it says add new record. And then it will pop open the row as far as what information needs to be entered for this invoice. So first thing you're going to want to do, select the vendor that you are inputting this invoice. So let's just pretend it is Bluebell. Put the invoice number that you got from the actual piece of paper. And then all you have to do is just save it right here. Once you've saved it, you can click here on this purchases button, which will open up your purchases section. So when you get that piece of paper, depending on if you are going to be manually entering based off of maybe they've only entered UPCs or maybe it's manually written down on a piece of paper, you have two options that ideally you're going to use. That's going to be through the item detailed entry. Or if you do get a paper invoice that has barcodes where you can scan your products into the system, then we do have a convenient tab here for using the scanner. So we'll go through item detailed entry first in case you have a paper invoice that does not have any barcodes. So when you read your invoice, it is going to have pretty much all the products and the quantity that has been input on that invoice. So all you have to do is just enter those values here at the top, entering the scan code, or if they have items that use item codes, then you can enter that value as well, as long as you've already set them up in the back office. So let's go ahead and enter an item that we could possibly see in a vendor invoice. So you'll notice that when you're entering the UPC of a specific item, we do have information that is loaded based off of items in your price book. So if you have items that are brand new, such as this item that I just entered, you'll notice that it says no data found here, which means this is a brand new item that is not in your price book. So when that happens, you're going to basically have to enter all the values down here to customize the item which department it belongs to, what's the case cost, how much you're going to sell it for, if it belongs to a specific category, price group, etc. So once you enter that item, our software, as long as we have this item in our database, it will pop up here as the description of that item. And then all you have to do is enter the amount or the quantity amount of what was received in your invoice. So let's just say we received 11. And before you can click on add, you do have to make sure that you enter all these values here. So you'll notice that you'll have these little green asterisks. So that means that it is required to enter those values before you can save this item. So you're going to go ahead and enter a department. And then you can enter what you're going to sell it for. And any other things such as units per case, the case costs based off of what is on your actual piece of paper. And 
Once you do that, you can just click on save here. And then it's going to add it down below to your grid. Pretty much all you have to do is just go one by one through that piece of paper. Enter the values for all the items that are going to be in that invoice. Once that is done at the bottom here, it'll pretty much give you a breakdown of the cost, which should be what is on the invoice itself. So if you had a cost of $30.69, then you need to make sure that that is actually what it shows on the receipt and make sure that this matches that value because if it does not then most likely you have entered something incorrectly and then the retail here is what you're going to be selling it at the register once you are done you have two options down here where you can either save the changes or save and close so if you hit save changes basically that means you are going to save the changes you can come back later at any time so you could hit save changes and then you could go anywhere else in the software do whatever you got to do and then maybe you come back and then you can just continue entering the remaining products off of this invoice when you hit save and close it's going to save your invoice and then close it and send you back to the main page well, another way that you can enter your invoices manually as I mentioned earlier, is attaching a scanner to your computer, and then you can actually scan the invoices if you do get a paper invoice with barcodes. Or if you just want to scan the actual products themselves in, you can do that as well. So I'm going to go back to that same purchase that we just created. And when we go inside, you'll see that there is the using scanner section. So here you'll be able to put any items that you've purchased. And scan them with the barcode and then anything that has been returned you can do the same thing and scan those items here so i'll grab a couple items that i have with me here and scan it and then once you have finished scanning those items you can click on the review tab it will pop open here a little section where you can review these items and as long as you see you know a description and a department and a cost then you know that this item has existed or it does exist in your price book but if for any reason if the description is blank or if the department is blank then you would actually have to go in here and edit that row and then you'll be able to put in here pretty much what was the quantity that was received for these items. You can set the case cost, set up the department where it belongs, and update the description if needed. Whenever you do that, click on that little checkbox to save it, and then hit the Save button here so that it can add it back to that grid page that you saw earlier. And then basically the same concept. You just have to verify that after you've scanned all those items, Verify that the cost that you have down here is matching with the cost on that receipt. Now, if for any reason you may have made mistakes in entering any of the values that you have in this area, you do have the ability to edit this page as well. So we have an option up here where there's a section where you can update specific columns, such as the if you wanted to add a category, maybe you've put the wrong department, so you want to update the department, update the cost, retail values, you can do all of that here. For example, let's say the cost is supposed to be a little bit higher, so you can come in here and you can edit it one of two ways. You can either edit it through the change values section here of the case cost, And then click update and you'll see that it updates it here to 399 or the other option that you have is you can also click into the field itself which generally a lot of people i personally would do it myself because it's a lot quicker to do just click it then you can update the price there hit enter and then you'll see that it puts a little red mark here in the top left corner showing that you've edited it for that row 
Same thing here, like if you wanted to add it to a price group, for example, you can just put it in there. Any categories, etc. you're able to just click on the column and then you can update it. We hope that you found this guide useful in better understanding your Modisoft back office. Please like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that you will always be up to date on your Modisoft back office. Thank you and have a wonderful day.